Whoa, noises. <laughs> yeah. All right, video. Anyway, um, so I think I'll talk about a couple of little side issues. Videos have been pointed to by other people. I said, that one wasn't my fault. This root is gnarly. Oh, it's a branch, I guess. Hey, hey, grab my, grab me. Grab me in a rude manner. Without my consent. Yeah. The root stick thing, root. Anyway, I mean, this is really, you know, that'd be better than this. Uh, I gotta hire some people. Uh, anyway, um, all right, so two, two, there was an edible napalm video about the amazing atheist. And then there was an Amazing Atheist video on veganism, so I guess I'll mush it a little bit on these two subjects. It's a general, loose way. So the Amazing Atheist was essentially having to defend himself of, you know, hypocrisy and duplicity in his stance on the fact that somebody blew up their dog, and he apparently must have showed some empathy for uh, the dog, and was um, appalled that somebody wouldn't face criminal charges for abusing a dog and uh, you know just pointing out to them well how do you justify the abuse that takes place with these animals and his argument was his defense was analogies to drinking a you know a shot of whiskey and drinking a whole bottle of whiskey and so they're both drinking so I guess they're both animals but somehow there's a big difference between them and no, this, he says the difference makes a difference. And uh, he even cited culture as one of the reasons that make the difference. But more importantly was designation. We have designated <laughs> livestock as livestock. And therefore, it must be true, because we declared it. And dogs are companions, and so therefore, they have better rights. So this argument, just you could just use this for anything, right? This kind of silly distinction argument. You could just say, the slaves are slaves, because yes, we've designated them slaves. They're clearly been designated, so, uh, you know, we, we, we tattooed the Jews, they have a tattoo on them, they've been designated Jew, uh, therefore there's a difference, you know, they probably might have horns and such. Now, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, he says these are significant differences, and they're obviously not, because they have nothing to do with real uh, capacities, properties of the animals, right? So you could argue that a seal that's hunted with, you know, in brutal uh, manner um, shouldn't be treated differently than a cow, in the sense that we force people to humanely kill cows. How come we don't force humane killing of seals? Uh, what's the difference? Oh, one's out in the wild. <laughs> yeah, well... That's not a, a property relevant to the welfare of the animal. Um, it's not relevant to anything. It's completely irrelevant to whether or not it's a bad act. And so anyway, his bottom line was, well, you can say should. Okay, you can, you can say I should. And then he just negated the whole should argument. We don't live in the world of should. I mean, you can't get any worse than this, can you? A guy who argues and advocates on the internet and then says, there's no such thing as should. I mean, what sense, I mean, you can't, how, how duplicitous are you going to get, TJ? You're making an argument that somebody should have been prosecuted for cruelty to a dog, and yet you say, but nobody should hold me accountable for the shoulds I haven't said. The shoulds that I know that I um, bury in the backyard because I don't want to have to look at them. Um, the shoulds that are perfectly rational and that I have just decided to ignore. Um, I mean, it's just, come on. Just call it duplicity. Call it what it is. Cause just say it. You're a selfish son of a bitch. You know there's a logical disconnect uh, in your uh, reality map, <laughs> you know, in that you can make these silly distinctions and especially relying on something like culture you know, using culture as an excuse, cultural labels somehow make it all right. Um, come on. I mean, just admit that you're full of shit, that people probably shouldn't, you know, take you as a, a reasonable pattern of how a human being should process information, that you're just doing it for your own convenience because you don't want to have to deal with the fact that changing your habits would be inconvenient. So just say that. 
You could even keep your habits and just say, look, I suck. I don't do anything the way I should do it. I just suck. I don't clean my room. I don't wipe my ass. You know, I can barely stand to look at myself and just admit that and say, okay, so I can't change, but you should. Try to do better. Try to do a lot better than me. Yeah, and don't fucking be cruel to animals if you don't have to. Don't eat them when you don't need to. All right, don't, don't be as big a douchebag as me. Why don't you just say that? I mean, goddamn, instead of doing this, let's break logic, let's break reason, and let's defend hypocrisy. <sighs> you know, using analogies and using something that appears to be logic to defend hypocrisy. And you're going to say that's somehow better than just, I mean, you've had a banana up your ass, jackass. You can't really humiliate yourself much more. So what would be the big deal in just admitting you're a selfish fuck, all right, and you can't do the right thing? You know it's not the right thing, and you, but you just can't do anything about it because you suck. Why don't you just admit it? God damn. <laughs> so it was just the stupidest video. He just basically and he ends the video by basically just saying, yes, you could probably view what I just did as a bunch of rationalizing nonsense. I mean, it's just, you know, fuck. So instead of just saying you're a hypocrite, you just imply that it's okay to think you're one. <laughs> you know, just to weasel out so you don't look you're completely like a retard. But it's just, what, it's just lame. It's just lame. So anyway, all right, second subject. Edible Night Palm makes a video about TJ's attitude about somehow there should be, you know, I don't know anything about TJ's position. I'm not going to go research it on Tumblr or wherever the fuck it is. Who cares? But anyway, he's apparently, TJ's apparently advocated that there should be some kind of free speech zones on the internet. Um, I would label it differently. I would say just like there's public infrastructure, uh, you know, like publicly regulated utilities. We regulate stock markets even though they're private companies. Uh, we do a lot of stuff to regulate things so there's... Um, no, you know, to, to eliminate the possibility of chicanery and unfairness and to maintain, uh, you know, the values we hold true. And so, yeah, obviously we have this circumstance where our free speech, our, our rights, have migrated to this new medium. The new medium doesn't have public squares. It doesn't have any, any circumstantial place to do this free speeching um, in any kind of parallel method to the uh, way you could do it in the real world. Um, you know, you can certainly speak freely on a back alley of the internet, but you can't freak, speak freely on any of the um, thoroughfares and all that kind of stuff. So obviously there has to be some sort of recognition that we've created a privately owned, every bit of the internet is privately owned, and that uh, in that circumstance we have to have some regulated space where we say, no, you've got to do it a little different if you're going to make money. Now you're going to be a monopoly on this medium. You know, that you're going to basically be where the public's going to be. And therefore, some of this ground has to be called semi, at least, public territory. And, uh, you know, they could come up with simple regulations where YouTube, uh, you know, outside of copyright violations, you know, all the flagged videos would still be available. They would just be behind a flag wall. Uh, you know, these are simple solutions. You know, so when you click on the video, you get, re you know, get a posted a banner that tells you that this content has been declared such and such. Uh, the YouTube personnel also states that uh, we don't think it's very good content either. They can even editorialize if they want to, but that the content is still available if somebody wishes to see it. And there's problem solved. Um, it's a degrade of, of free speech, but it isn't an abolishment of free speech. I think uh, some of the same kind of rules have to be applied in indexing content, too, because obviously, you know, it's got to be available. The Internet is a different kind of world, and the index of the content is vitally important. It's not like a roadway where you can just drive down roads and things have addresses that you can get to. It's very different. You have to have links to the addresses. 
and the links have to be available to get to the addresses. And, uh, you know, there's going to be places where, uh, you know, it's got to be on a map somewhere, and the map's got to be accurate, I guess is the point. You can't write inaccurate maps. I don't think the, the government would be too happy if, you know, when the gas stations gave out maps in the old days, they didn't put certain things on the maps, <laughs> you know, out of pure discrimination. Because they didn't like something. They said, let's not put it on the map. We don't like that road because it has a certain, uh, it's too liberal. Too many liberals live on it. Uh, that would be considered bullshit. Um, it wouldn't be tolerable to uh, produce fake or false or phony maps. And Google and YouTube are producing phony maps of the internet. Uh, so anyway, so anyway, so right up with Napalm made his video, and he was deriding TJ, uh, partly for his hypocrisy in the sense of his duplicity, choose your own word, um, for having nothing to say in the past when this was happening to everybody else, and all of a sudden now, because it happens to him, it's important, which is just, you know, that is lame, <laughs> you know, um, but uh, he seemed to be even more aggressive than that, he seemed to be almost suggesting that, uh, these are private corporations and somehow they should have their rights and people who want to be, uh, who want to have free speech rights should be able to finance their own website and produce it and somehow network it and, you know, buy Google ads so they can have it networked on the Google franchise. I mean, I don't think that should be the requirement. I think if you publish a book, you have a right to have it in the Library of Congress's card catalog. Uh, you know, and uh, our free speech has got to have the same kind of protections. Uh, we can't, we just got to do some regulating here. And so I don't know whether, <clears throat> it's hard to say what Edible's real position is, but he was certainly implying uh, that it's wrong to think there should be interference and that our um, constitutional rights should have some reality on the internet. And they even used the lame excuse, so I mean, it does sort of indicate something, that um, there are a lot of foreign participants on the internet. And uh, so what? Yeah, when foreigners come to the United States, they, they have our same rights. And yes, people should have rights. So yeah, we should be showing the world how to do things right, not showing the world how to suppress and censor. So yeah. Even if they didn't join along, even if their countries were uh, uh, dissatisfied with uh, the rules, screw them. Uh, but yeah, we should have some guarantees uh, on the in terms of rights, and at minimum for the Americans. And I'm certainly all for giving everyone on Earth uh, free speech rights on uh, the internet even if their government don't like it. I think that's just super if we could do that. So that would be a win-win in my opinion. That would be a double bonus. Uh, that we make the world a better place while we protect our own constitution. Uh, so anyway, I just thought Edible's video was inadequate to the purpose and it implied that he's become some sort of libertarian douchebag. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe some other kind of douchebag. Um, but anyway, yeah, his rhetoric just seemed a little too heavy-handed. And uh, it just seemed more about I hate, hate, hate TJ rather than, uh, you know, maybe there's a some kernel of purpose. And that even though TJ's a fucking hypocrite, at least it's good that somebody with a meaningful, recognized account is talking about the fact that censorship sucks and that's probably a huge benefit and that even if TJ is a grotesque hypocrite the fact that he's saying discrimination sucks is good uh, I mean even if TJ is a disgusting hypocrite it's good that he's at least saying people shouldn't be blowing up dogs I mean that's fucking progress for TJ right I mean t you know six years ago I think he would have said you know People have a right to, you know, swallow dogs alive. Uh, so, uh, you know, maybe he's 
finally, uh, you know, some kind of hormones have t- t- kicked in and he's actually evolving a tiny bit. Um, you know, the fact that he basically made a video just saying I'm a fucking hypocrite is probably uh, more evidence of that. He didn't even try to make uh, an argument defending uh, his hypocrisy in the sense that he didn't sit there and just slander the fuck out of vegans. He instead just made a weak, um, hypocritical, obviously hypocritical, uh, dif- rationalization for his behavior. And so in a sense, it was a huge win for uh, goodness in the world <laughs> and uh, some evidence of maybe some maturity uh, on the part of the amazing atheist. And so, in an ironic kind of way, it's Edible Napalm, who it might appear has taken some steps backwards or something. But it just might be appearances. It's pretty hard to... You've got to be careful with appearances with Edible Napalm. Uh, yeah, because there's just way too many uh, blobbing, moving parts. It's like the blob. You don't know which part of it's going to reach out and grab you. Uh, so anyway... I think that's enough. I'm just sort of dragging this out a little so I can finish my walk in the continuity of the babble. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, if there's any monsters in my pool. Ah, no, it looks, looks like it's all mine. Yay. It's been nice. Nice weather and no people. Not a common... Uh, occurrence. So I usually get the bad weather <laughs> to myself. But anyway, so enough of a video, kind of a change of pace. I was thinking I do have to do some, you know, maybe some political vlogs of some kind. But uh, we'll see. Till next time. Such.